Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming in today. So today, I'm going to talk about, um, as was just mentioned, enhancing a precious metals portfolio and some of the market drivers behind that. And I'm going to be talking about a specific subset of a precious metals portfolio, and that's more the physical side. So as we know, when people say, I'm going to invest in precious metals, a lot of times it's going to be through equities, mining shares, you know, either direct shares or a fund. And then you have the flip side, which would be the bullion. And in that section, it's kind of broken into two subsets, I would say. I would say there are the exchange-traded products, like ETFs, and then you have the physical side. And each makes their case of why one is better than the other. Um, now, with the ETFs, you know, I would say all ETFs are not created equal. If any of you have looked into them and looked at the prospectuses that go along with them. For the best editorial on junior mining, visit cambridgehouse.com slash mining. Click the link in the description below to learn more. You would see some are more transparent or some are use a lot of derivatives where others are better pure plays. But an ETF is still an exchange traded product and there, well, we believe there are certain drawbacks or risks to that. So we've always been and I've been in the physical precious metals world for since 2002. And we pretty much see how investors behave with precious metals and a number of years ago we thought there's a lot of benefits to the physical precious metals before, be, beyond what's just normally pitched. You'll hear talk, people talk about no counterparty risk, owning the bullion directly. And we said, how can we marry that with some of the benefits of maybe like what ETFs offer, but also provide a diversification to give a better risk-adjusted return? And that, that's what I'm going to show to you today. And a little later, I'm going to introduce you, and maybe you know an analyst, who discovered us many years ago, recommended us, very high profile author and analyst, and even just recently said, in precious metals, this is the holy grail because you actually got better returns with lower risk. And that's genuine, no tricks, no tricks. So let's jump in. When it comes to the physical precious metals investor, this is generally the approach that we've seen. You know, they say, hey, I'm gonna put a little, uh, once they buy in that precious metals make sense, say, okay, I'm going to get a little gold, put it in my portfolio, the hedge against the dollar, the stock market, bonds, you know, and gold was for the more conservative investor, the person who wanted to be a little more speculative and looking for that bigger return usually would go into silver, right? A lot of analysts saying how silver will outperform gold once things are all said and done. And then, you know, a person would say, well, I'm going to balance that out a little bit, right? So I'm going to have some gold and some silver. For the best editorial on junior mining, visit cambridgehouse.com slash mining. Click the link in the description below to learn more. And, you know, that's good. Um, now remember, physical bullion is really a buy and hold asset, right? It's something you do not buy and sell next month, even six months from now. It's really for the intermediate to longer term hold. And that's something to keep in mind. You, you don't want to churn. You don't want to treat it like assets that have lower friction costs or trading costs. So physical metals are really a store of wealth. Now, what we set out to do is, OK, how do we take a physical portfolio with all the benefits it has, and how do we optimize it? And how do we apply some of the principles that other investments get from people who really try to fine tune a portfolio? And, an objective of portfolio management is first and foremost managing risk. And in precious metals, the risk is not that they're going to go to zero, right? That's one of the beauties of precious metals. Yeah, 5,000 years, they never go to zero. But there's a lot of volatility. And anyone who's owned silver or chased silver should know that, right? There was a lot of folks telling people back in 2010 and 11 when silver was bearing down on 50 that it was imminent, it's going to 100 or 200, and a lot of people piled in. Obviously, we're in, the, we're in the low teens right now, mid-teens. Do I think silver will be higher in the years to come? Yes, but from a portfolio management perspective, that's not good. You know, you do not want to be down a lot in the interim. All right, so we set out to construct, construct a portfolio that's logically weighted across the metals to get a better risk-adjusted return. And we're doing it just on the construction and the holding of a long position in the physical metals. We are not going out and advocating any strategies using hedging, you know, using a derivative, like saying, hey, if we think gold is up, let's go short GLD, you know, so then we'll, we'll, we'll make some profit on the way down. That's risk. 
because between you and I, that doesn't work. You know, we're not talking about charting. We're not talking about churning. And precious metals, as I said before, when you own the physical, a lot of benefits, but it's not something you'd be trading in and out of. The cost of trading the physical is just too high. It'll kill your profits. So our goal is to produce a superior buy and hold asset, something that you do not have to hover over, fine tune, and get pillaged with costs by a broker or you know, a dealer who's moving you in and out of a position. So we're not talking about market timing. I don't know if ever you have ever worked with a physical metal dealer that ever tried to talk about timing, swapping in and out of gold and silver based on ratios. I heard that years ago from people. It doesn't work. You know, they would say, well, when the ratio between gold and silver gets too extreme, sell your gold and go in all in silver because it'll correct. We all know that hasn't happened in a long time. So it was a pretty futile position to take. You know, the other thing, people try to use market timing based on similar drivers, right? Silver and palladium have some similar drivers, right? Both industrial use, both are using more in industrial fabrication than is coming out of the mines. That's done really well for palladium, right? If you follow these markets, palladium has knocked the cover off the ball the last few years, and silver just continues to languish, along with platinum. Again, frictional costs, we're not advocating trading. Too expensive. And the other thing is when you're trying to, if you think you can manage a portfolio of physical metals, the fundamentals will frustrate you. I mean, based on the fundamentals, you heard analysts say after the financial crisis in 2008, and I'm out of the U.S., right? So they talk about the U.S. Fed with uh, QE1, QE2. Well, gold was supposed to take a moonshot. It hasn't happened yet. Do I think gold will go up in the years to come? Absolutely. But the fundamentals that some people use as a rationale to buy in and then get disappointed and then unfortunately probably leave a position they shouldn't leave, um, that's why the fundamentals will frustrate you. So the metals don't move in lockstep. And that's why you want diversification across the metals. Okay? You know, gold is all about money. It's all about how your currency, your fiat currency, and us in the US, how the dollar is doing versus gold. Silver is that quasi metal monetary and industrial. Platinum and palladium are industrial, but with a nice caveat, right? Unlike silver, which is mined in Canada, the US, Mexico, all over, platinum and palladium, 80% of it is coming out of Russia and South Africa. And those drivers make it a totally different market for these metals. That's why palladium has been going up so much. The people that need it realize, hey, that supply could be curtailed or cut off at any time, South Africa is a, pretty much a basket case as far as uh, you know, their society and the reliability. And Russia, we have a host of geopolitical issues with them. So again, instead of trying to outsmart the market, trying to figure out when is the driver going to make these metals move, we say you can just construct it once and let it and leave it alone. So as I said, the goals that we talked about for better a better risk-adjusted return, and the challenges we talked about by not using derivatives, not using some sort of trading strategy. A lot of things you'll hear guys pitch, you know, buy my trading strategy. No, this is what we believe what a, a typical investor really wants. I want it, I don't want volatility. I would like to get an enhanced return. I like the benefit of owning the physical, and I don't want to be getting calls to buy and sell. Right? Like when I was at a Merrill Lynch, you know, they used to call that churning, right? Churning an account. You don't want to be churning. So I'm going to show you what, this, what our construction looks like. Now, you could do this on your own, but you're going to see that we've actually made it a lot easier than that. Now, I'm going back to 2008 because the product of what we talked about, the strategy we talked about, has been in place since 2008. And there's a performance of gold since that time. So as you can see, those, are, those plot points are the end of the year price or the return. So gold, after the crisis in 2008, went up to $1,900 an ounce, as we know, then came down, basically hit a bottom in December of 2015, spent two years coming up, and you know, is up a little bit so far this year. Let's overlay silver on that. There's silver with its classic volatility, moonshot, we're close to it back in 2009, 10, 11, then comes crashing down. 
Basically, the total return since 2008 between gold and silver is about the same. Of course, that only works if you did buy at that nice low price point of 2008. Um, if you bought in 9, 10, 11, it's been a little more painful. Now, how about if you were a physical metals investor? And even if you're a mining investor, physical should be in your portfolio. That's what a portfolio manager likes. That's a better risk-adjusted return. There's no derivatives. It's just a logical construction and buy and hold allocation with no changes. And just so you know, this allocation, this weighted allocation has been exactly the same and will never change. So silver shot up for a while, obviously came crashing down. And because of some of the other components, the exposure are, the customers have into platinum and palladium, not so much platinum right now, but palladium's been carrying the ball. Not only has it been a better blended, less volatile return, but it's actually handily outperformed gold and silver. So as I said, you could try to construct it on your own and you can, but there's a much more efficient, that means price efficient, liquid way of doing it. It's actually been in the market since 2008. It actually got a patent in 2013. It's not just because of the allocation, but it's the whole process behind it by allocating and deallocating physical bullion in the customer's name at the depository level. And why that's important, that's different than an ETF. ETF is you're buying shares into usually a trust, right? You're not recognized as the owner of the metal in the ultimate depository. Here you are. So it's recognized by all the SEC, CFTC as physical bullion ownership, not a fund, not a stock. And it's actually available, obviously, through Neptune Global, the company I represent, but through other dealers. So it's a, a product that's being uh, transacted in more and more through more dealers, and it's been growing at a tremendous clip. So the precious metals composite, the PMC ounce, has been recognized by a number of analysts and market commentators through the years. Some people might be familiar with Jim, right? Jim's been a best-selling author, the death of money, new case for um, currency wars, uh, the new case for gold. A lot of people uh, follow his work. He discovered us way back in 2009, asked us to come in and give him a presentation, loved, understood it immediately, knew how it was going to perform going forward as a portfolio manager, used things called like the Sortino ratio, which is what portfolio managers will do to measure the risk-adjusted return of an investment, and it is a superior risk-adjusted return from any angle you slice it. So obviously he's a big proponent of owning precious metals, and it'll just sum it up at the end that he basically feels the product is the most intelligent innovation in precious metals investing. And he is the one who just recently on a video, which you could see on YouTube in an interview, said basically, unlike most investments, you got a better return with lower risk. That's the holy grail. We all know most investments, you want a better return, you take on the risk. Here, you took less risk, you get a better return. And again, this isn't about a fund manager. We're, no one's trading. This isn't what happens in a fund where you, someone is supposedly a guru who has a formula who can buy and sell advantageously. This is just a physical position that's logically weighted. So I'm assuming you want to know what that looks like. So we call it the PMC ounce, and it trades by the ounce. And you think of it as like a pizza, I think is the best way of describing it, with four slices. And it's weighted toward gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Now first, that's the physical weighting. Now some people, they look at that and they, they don't get it. They say, well, that's mostly silver, right? It's a silver position. But as we know, there's a big price differential between the metals. So when you look at an investment, you're talking about your weighting into an investment, you're looking about how many dollars are going in. Again, this weighting will never change. It's the same it was on day one, and it has to always stay the same, or else you're, you're creating a custom portfolio. Because one question people will say is, well, why don't I just give you know, $50,000 and then put X percent into gold, silver, platinum, palladium? Well, then everyone just has a custom allocation, right? And then you couldn't function the way this is in the marketplace. So this is every dealer can, who, who buys and sells it for their customers, Everyone's working off the exact same price, the exact same amount of metal is being allocated and deallocated with each trade. Now, 
on our website and also the dealers that transact in it, we have something called the PMC calculator because it helps to clarify what I was talking about, about the allocation of the money and the metals. So anyone could go there and you access it through the home page. And what it does, it's, it's all in real time. This was from several months ago. Um, but the pricing is all in real time. And up in the upper left-hand corner where you see the red circle, you would enter number of PMC ounces. You know, the simple thing below it is it shows what the price per ounce is at the current market price. That's an all-in price. That's buy us buying the fabricated metals, delivering it into the depository, and the total trade amount. But the important, the educational part, is what you see to the right. So there, that's showing you, okay, how much gold, silver, platinum, palladium was acquired. So if 3.5% is gold, those are 400 ounces, that's how much gold. Then when you see that, oh, there's a lot more silver, but you look farther to the right, that's showing you how much of each dollar went into each metal. There you see, gold is still the primary. We would never have to constructed anything that put you know, platinum and palladium at the same stature as gold, right? Platinum is 1%, palladium's just 1.75. That may not sound like a lot, but it has a material impact, right? When we looked at the chart of that performance, silver, gold, platinum, all down the last several years, PMC up. Why? Palladium is carrying the ball. Now at some point, platinum will start coming back. Once palladium gets with the kind of delta it has now with platinum, the people that use and can substitute palladium with platinum will eventually come around, and then platinum will start kicking in, and maybe palladium will tail off. But that's what diversification does. You do not know when those changes are going to happen. I mean, we have customers in our regular precious metals business who thought three years ago platinum was going to come back, and, and, and obviously it hasn't worked for them. So our position is, look, we're in this market all the time. We don't know. Anyone who can tell you they know when the metals are going to go up or going to go down, really, it's not right. I mean, we've, we've heard this for years. We understand it is to be in the metals, but taking a diversified position like this obviously has proves to work. And that's what it's all about, a better risk-adjusted return. So just to summarize, to try to get an understanding of what happens. As we said, each PMC ounce is like a, a pizza with four slices. Depending on how many PMC ounces you buy or own, the aggregate of that adds up, and there's a quantity that's in a non-bank bullion depository. Um, it's not us, right? You wouldn't want your dealer to be a depository. Uh, we, use, we actually use a company called IDS as our primary depository. Um, they have a depository in Toronto, but we don't keep it in Toronto. It's not that we don't love Canada. It's just that you have a VAT tax on palladium. So we use IDS's facility in Delaware. Um, but it's a major non-bank depository, um, and they are recording the ownership of that metal. So when you buy through a dealer, whether it's us or another one, the person gets a transaction confirmation, they get an online account, they get to see what their holdings are, the history of the metal moving in and out, but they're also getting direct reporting from the depository, not through the dealer, confirming when the metals de get delivered to them and them allocating and recognizing the customer as the owner. That's something, of course, an ETF doesn't provide, right? So it's a storage account, it's not a fund. So my time is down to like the last minute. As I said, it's a, it's a simple strategy. You could try to construct it on your own. Um, but it wouldn't be as efficient price-wise, especially wouldn't be able to uh, be as divisible, meaning a person could buy three, 400 PMC ounces with us, and then as the market, maybe they want to start getting out of the position, selling off 25. You would always have the exact right, what we believe, allocation. Uh, you couldn't really do that on your own. You'd be buying these individual bars, and which one am I going to sell? So as far as price efficiency and uh, portfolio efficiency, you know, the PMC ounce, we think, where it has proven to be extremely beneficial and has really worked for investors, especially when the markets have been a little slack for things like gold and silver. So again, it's available through dealers. If you work with a dealer, you can reach out to them. You could always reach out to us. I encourage you to visit our website to learn more about us. Everyone, I appreciate you coming out and enjoy the rest of your day.